We'll share. So my name is Joni. Thank you very much for having us here today. So we interacted with Dr. Kay Brand some time ago, and she invited us to come and present to you. And they say that once you spend your money, there's a way to get it back. But once you spend your time, it's gone forever. So we really appreciate the time and energy that you've spent to be here today. So what we'd like to do is do a presentation of an overview of myofascial release of what it is and how it works. Following that presentation, we want to show you a demonstration of a sample treatment. And then we've also brought some of our self-treatment products with us. So you're more than welcome to try them out, or we can show you how to use them. Thanks, everyone. Um, just, just to get a feel for uh, who, who we're talking to, are we good? Um, who, who in here experiences pain of, of some description? <laughs> OK, we're pretty, pretty safe there. Keep your hands up. Or um, Headaches? In particular, yeah, okay, um, and something very unique to you guys is fibro fog, yes, yeah. yeah, okay, but it's interesting to see though, isn't it, that some people don't experience those things. Um, so how about some other main symptoms that if you could change just one thing about how your body feels, what would that what would that one thing be? Fatigue. Fatigue. Uh huh. Pain. Pain's the main one. Yeah. Any pain? Okay. Bursitis. Um, oh yes. Shoulder, knees, hip. hip. Uh huh. Yep. Any others? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so is that directly related to the pain? Do you think? Um, just, things could be restless legs. Okay, restless leg. Good, good one. Yeah. 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 Okay. So what I'd like to cover today, if it's all right with you, is a, another understanding of pain and pain as it originates in the body. So I know last week you had a presenter about um, the mind, neural pathways, pain gates, some of those sorts of concepts. What, what, would, what I'd like to cover today is some of the, the body origins of our pain, which for most of you, sounds like that's the that's the main thing. Okay, so the first first thing I'd like to show you, if this this video works, um, a f several years ago, a French hand surgeon actually took a video camera inside one of his his patients. So, if remembering that. Doctors have learned pretty much everything we know. Most of the research that is done is either done on uh, dead bodies, cadavers, or on um, block your ears, on uh, animals sometimes. So no one has ever really looked inside the living human body. So this, is, this little video will show you some of the Can everyone, everyone see that okay? Okay. So, he took a video camera inside at 25 times magnification. Okay, so this is, this is super blown up. And all these little strings here, they are what we call the fascia. So when we say we're from myofascial release, fascia is really the building block of the body. In the same way that these buildings are all built with bricks, one on the other, the same in our body. What's different about fascia, though, is that it's, it looks chaotic, but it's also organized. Inside all these straight lines, you'll see that the nodal points move, or where the, where the lines of connective tissue join, they change. Any guesses what that red thing is? The lighting's not good, is it? 
<laughs> Pain? Inflammation. Possibly, yeah. Capillary. Capillary, yes. Your new committee members gets the prize. So this is zoomed out a little bit, probably like 15 times. All this connective tissue surrounding your, your blood vessels. That's important for later on. Zoomed in again. Did someone say jellyfish? Yeah, it is, isn't it? It's, to me, when I first saw this, I was blown away. This is, this is actually what our bodies look like on the inside. Just have a look right. Oh, there we go. There. No, we missed it. I'm going to try, try and back up. I'll skip it. Is the color of filter? Ah, good question. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. He's put a color filter over this section. Um, but as we get further along, the color does become authentic. When you see that red blood vessel, like that. And what's important to recognize from a, from a medical point of view is that we can't think in terms of uh, muscles linking from here to here anymore or from there to there. There may be general lines within the body, but the whole thing is completely flexible. And does that red thing just stop halfway? Or is that the end of it sort of thing? Is it joining on something? Uh, it would be flowing through lines of, of tissue. So it just goes out of sight. But it is, it is a blood vessel, so it would be... Yes, all roads lead to Rome. Or the heart, in this case. OK. I'm not sure if you can see it there, but right here, there was a little bubble move. So that little bubble shows you that that's actually a tube. It's a hollow tube. It's not, in fact, a fiber. Quite often when you have things explained to you, they talk in terms of muscle fibers. And they're half right, but they're actually more like a, a watery tube. And inside all this, what looks like space around here, is actually more fluid. So there's no, there's no such thing as, a, as an empty space in there. It's just all links to, to each other. And then, so as he's moving the person, all these fibers are moving too. Looks like an alien. It does. <coughs> OK. So this, this to us is very exciting. Right here, you have these two, what used to be two lines, two straight lines. And now they're separating in the middle. So this is actually myofascial release in action. Now, why is this so exciting? This tissue surrounds every blood vessel, nerve, ligament, bone, bursa, joint, everything. And when it gets tight, it puts crushing pressure on those pain-sensitive structures. So have you ever felt like, tightness and it's sort of like a general tightness it's like it might be like your whole head or your your head's too close to your tail or, or those sorts of things yes that that sort of pressure if only someone could release that we'd feel a whole lot better wouldn't we mm -hmm. so the idea behind all this what we call, what we talk about myofascial release is that you could in fact release that pressure and watch what happens It builds up tension, pressure, and then it reorganizes. It, it looks like for a moment there that it's, it's going to tear, but it rarely does. It just changes shape. So you, we've now formed a third little string across there. What is it made of? Um, it's made of... It's made of th three things. 
the two proteins, uh, collagen and elastin. Um, this is a little tangent, by the way, so don't let the science baffle you. Muscles are mostly elastin, so they're stretchy. Uh, tendons, at the other end of the spectrum, are mostly collagen. That's why, if you've ever looked inside a um, rump steak, something like that, there, you'll see the red sections, and then you'll see like these white lines in between. Yeah? So the white lines are the fascia. And that, that's what you're looking at here, all, this, all these strong fibers. And the, the third, third thing, of course, is the ground substance, the extracellular matrix. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah. There you go. There's another one forming out the back there. So they're not always there. They just form at will? Yeah. Who notices that their symptoms vary from day to day? Yeah? If, the, if you don't sleep well, the next day's crappy. Yep. <laughs> Good word. And if you don't sleep well for days and days and days and days, you yes. <laughs> yes. So yes, these, these things change. Absolutely. Good. Okay. Who's this? This is John Barnes. He's the American physiotherapist who developed myofascial release back in the 60s, 70s. John has actually worked for John for a couple of years. Um, we've all done our training under him. So who's heard of the term myofascial release? Okay, all right, cool. So what happened is over time, people have tried to fit his techniques into a traditional like a massage session or a physiotherapy session or they've, they've tried to mix um, his very gentle, very subtle, slow form of myofascial release with, with the, the traditional strengthening, stretching, all those sorts of things. So when, when we talk about myofascial release, it's probably guessing something different to what you would have experienced before. But anyway, so his, his background is that through his own pain, he developed this technique that is very gentle and slow and tends to get more long-lasting results. So it's a, it's a hands-on technique. It's, there's no oil, there's no creams, there's no knuckles or elbows or knees or any sliding whatsoever. It's, and there's no other machines. It's, it's, it's really just the use of your hands. Um, we'll also, at the end, we'll teach you some things that you can do yourself. Chemistry, oh, doctors have, have really, up until now, thought of the body as a, a bag of chemicals. And that if you've got a problem in the body, then if you introduce another chemical, you'll somehow solve it. And that's where I find fibromyalgia very fascinating. Um, excuse me for saying that. <laughs> it, um, I interesting. Maybe interesting is a better word. Because it's really forced us, the medical profession generally, to think outside the square. You've taught the medical profession so much. Some, Some of them, yes. yes. <laughs> well, right. Um, and generally when they say, oh, it's all in your head, that's a cliche way of saying, I, I have no idea what, you, what you're talking about. Because fibromyalgia doesn't generally fit a chemical condition. They're still looking for the, the magic pill, the magic gene, the magic something that means that it, some people get fibromyalgia, some people don't. It's interesting to see a couple of guys here too, by the way. I've never presented to, to, to men, mostly women. Um, so their solution is some other sort of drug. We'll bring an old Parkinsonian drug off the shelf that was outlawed 10 years ago. We'll relabel it, call it America, and then uh, yeah. give it to everyone with fibro. Um, so there's a lot of dishonesty, not, not just in terms of the drug companies, but in, also in terms of their very foundation. Because what you've just seen in the video is actually not just a chemical thing. There's all this tissue and blood vessels and all these structures and nerves and things going everywhere. What did I just do? There we go. Other doctors, physios, osteos, massage therapists, all those sorts of things, have thought of the body pretty much as a system. Like it's just levers and pulleys and, well, if exercise hurts, don't do it. Um, and when you say that you hurt, 
without doing any exercise or without even moving, it really stumps these people because in their worldview, pain must be related to muscles. Well, again, you, you've probably found it doesn't relate to that either. So, so between these two worlds of either chemicals or muscles and levers and pulleys, um, there is what I like to introduce you to is a, another whole way of looking at things. So the, the only option for the medical people who think in terms of muscles is to cut you open, unfortunately. Because really their chemistry looks like that, and that doesn't look like you or me. It's very orderly, nice, neat, clean, and fibromyalgia, I'm sure you attest, is, is none of those things. Because we're much, we're much more like that. We're, some days it's like this, some days it's like that. That is, isn't it? What's interesting about this, this picture, if you've seen fractal work before, is that what you see out here, for example, is identical to what you see in here, just on a different scale. It's the same with our body. Every, because uh, your body has digestive system, eliminatory system, respiratory system, all those things. Every cell does too. So when your cells are not happy, the entire body is not happy. Has anyone ever seen this, this experiment where you mix lots and lots of corn flour with water and it becomes a, a solid? Yeah? Yeah. You can punch it all. Yep. You can put it in slow and you can it yep. six, but you can punch it. Yep. It's, it's um, like a solid Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, they call it non-Newtonian liquid. Sorry about all the big words. Our whole medical system is based on the Newtonian view of things, which has been proven obsolete for the last, probably about since the 30s and 40s. Um, because things like this, absolutely rattle the current medical paradigm. And that is where you can have a liquid. See, see back here, it's behaving like liquid. But because he's running on that, it's behaving like a solid. Does anyone have any like grisly bits? Yeah, sort of between your shoulder blades and things. So chemically, that is still a tissue. Uh, people try and grind it apart to separate it and it just springs back. Yeah? Same as you saw in that video, that sort of springy sort of effect. So like with this, with force it becomes hard and generally most of the people we've treated with fibromyalgia, massage actually aggravates things. They can't do anything like that the physio say to strengthen this and strengthen that. They just can't do those things because the system is already dry and dehydrated and hard, so someone trying to give you a massage or stretch or something <coughs> is just meeting that force with force. And the fascial si system, which I'm simulating with the cornstarch solution, the fascial system is actually just pushing back against them. You try and stretch and it just works the opposite direction. Yeah, you're nodding your head. Okay. <laughs> Um, so, for a lot of people, correct me if I'm wrong, it started with maybe a virus or an accident or a stressful situation or surgery, Not all, of surgery all of those, any of those, but, but sometimes, sometimes nothing, it just sort of happened, yeah, okay. Generally what happens, whenever the, whenever the body is in a uh, threatening situation, be it a virus or a stressor or death in the family or loss of a job or any sort of stressor, um, it has the tendency to put the brakes on, hopefully before you hit the wall, but the body's, the body's trying to protect you, yes? As, the, as that protection mechanism stays engaged, it actually becomes exhausting. It's like trying to drive with your foot on the brake and your foot on the accelerator. Yeah? It's, trying to, it's trying to go and stop at the same time. So on the one hand, your body's trying to protect you. And that's one thing we must respect. Whenever our clients say, look, it's hurting, it's not, it's not working, it's whatever, back off. 
it, it must be gentle because anything that engages that sort of flinch response, if I was to throw something at you, what's going to happen? Yeah? Who feels like they've been living like that for years? Yeah? So what our aim then is understanding that the body has put its brakes on. Our aim is to help the body take the brakes off. Make sense? When the body puts its brakes on, those little fibers that you saw in there, in the, the video at the very beginning, those little fibers become as strong as steel cables. So trying to push through your pain or just grin and bear it, no pain, no gain, trying to do those sorts of things, you must remember you're actually pulling against steel cables. The body will always win. The body will push back until it gets what it wants. Yes? If you do too much, it says, enough stop, enough, and it's going to take you twice as long to recover. Mm -hmm. Yes? OK. So again, the, if these steel cables are there, we need to get them out. Normal tissue is nice and fluid, soft, relaxed. Fascia in its, in its in the baby state, so to speak. Have you ever seen babies? They can sleep like that and not get a crick neck. They can fall over and not hurt themselves because their, their fascial system is so loose and soft and, and nice. And that's how it should be. Um, somehow we end up feeling like that. I think. <laughs> yeah. Fish out of water. We're just all dried up. We're allowed. looking. For as I was looking at those eyes, I think that's a pretty bad case of fibro fog, wouldn't you? Those who don't smell like that. Yes, that's right. Whereas in nature, you never, if you see an animal limping or injured, it's only a temporary thing, isn't it? Once they're better, they're better. Unless, of course, the seagulls had the fish bite its leg off or something. But, Nature would like for you to go through this trauma, be it a stressful situation at work or, or whatever the impetus would be. You, nature would have you deal with that in probably about six to eight weeks on the outside. So when the brakes come on, don't beat yourself up. It's nature's way of trying to protect you. But it's also telling you, deal with it. Once you resolve the problem, then the body doesn't have to keep the brakes on. Yes? And this, again, this is where um, people suffering with fibromyalgia are really forcing the medical profession to rethink things. How is it, if we can heal pretty much anything in six to eight weeks, please explain chronic conditions. Whatever it is, if it's lasting a long time, then someone's not getting to the root, the root cause. That's what happens if you stretch too much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, so getting back to what we would do for someone with fibromyalgia, um, the first thing I would say is that it has to be gentle. It has to be maybe not that light, but it has to be very subtle. Because anything that anyone would do to the body that makes it <clears throat> put the brakes on, and you've, you've lost the game, for, even before you start. So rule number one, whatever it is, if, who, who has a stretching routine that they do? OK, good. Um, rule number one, if our experience would tell us anything, is keep it gentle. Keep it very light. There's no point pushing through or feel the burn. That's, it might be okay if you're 22, but not otherwise. Rule number two. One of the things that, that uh, our teacher, John Barnes, discovered is that to get a full release in the connective tissue, it takes between five and seven minutes in the one spot. So you, none of this sort of stuff, because who wants to stand there for five minutes? It has to be sustained. 
there's lots of reasons for that. Getting back to the composition of what makes up fascia, um, if you hold it for anything less than three to five minutes, uh, than five to seven minutes, it will just spring back. Okay, most people would say if you've had a massage, it feels lovely, maybe, and then two days later, oh, I could do with another one. So the muscles have this way of springing back, springing back. And that's because no one has waited long enough. We're not a very patient society to start with. But no one's waited long enough for the tissue to actually change. Do you remember that uh, release we saw at the very beginning of those two strings that actually formed a third? That's what has to happen in order to take the pressure off the fascial system and therefore the nerves. Here's an interesting fact. The, the weight of a human hair across a nerve is enough to fire it off. Yeah? So the difference between feeling rotten, awful, terrible, in wicked pain, and, the, and not feeling any pain, you, you're talking microns. It doesn't have to be this huge release or massive stretch or hugely improved posture. It can just be a, a minute thing. Is a chair up the front over here or hold on back here if you need one? So rule number two, if you're going to do anything for stretching, releasing, then it's got to be held for a significant amount of time. You'll actually feel several releases. Within that five to seven minutes, it will be very, uh, nothing much will happen for probably 90 to 120 seconds. Then you'll start to feel it let go, and it'll let go a little bit more as layers and layers of the tissue are letting go. But then if you stop there, over time it just springs back. So what we're waiting for is for the tissue to fully release in that five to seven minutes. What's happening during that five to seven minutes is a little bit like this. You know those balls that you put your hand on the outside of them and they light up? Those pi um, pi Aesthetic. Aesthetic balls, that's it, thank you. What we do we're doing in the body as a therapist or even self-treatment at home is setting up that same microcurrent of, of electricity in there. So you're actually lighting up all your cells every time you're, you're treating yourself. What that does over time is releases the muscle memory effect. Who's heard of muscle memory? Yeah? Golfers use it a lot. They practice their swing so many times that when they are playing the game, they don't actually have to think about it anymore. It just comes natural. Yeah? That's in the positive sense. In the negative sense, um, who wakes up and thinks, um, yeah, I think today's going to be a pretty tight day. I better remember how to better remember how to do this. It just happens automatically, doesn't it? For most people, it would go back to a trauma, or in other cases, it's accumulation of micro traumas that creates this muscle memory. So by waiting five to seven minutes, you're erasing that memory so that your body forgets being tight, and it goes back to ideally the, the baby state. I wish. <laughs> theoretically, theoretically speaking, yeah. So when we're holding this position for five to seven minutes, there's no rolling or rubbing or jiggling or any of those things. We're just holding there in one spot, just like these guys. How, how do you like this guy here? Isn't that amazing? <laughs> That's what you call strong abs. When you stay in the one spot, it allows the fascia from all over the body to release at the same time. Because when, we'll do this later, but if you go like that, you start to feel a, bit, a little bit of a stretch in here. Yeah, you can imagine that. As you wait longer, you actually feel it go down into your thumb, and around the back of your head and all these weird things. And again, the textbooks won't show you the connection between here and here, but you actually feel it. So that's why you have to hold in, this, in these positions for a, 
quite a length of time. Why is the length of time important? Because we're actually talking about a state change. We're talking about a solid, gristly, tight muscle going back to something, you know, a bit like a candle. It goes from hard wax back to something runny, fluid. Yeah? Another first. The, the last rule we would talk about is there's, this, there's an unwinding element. You see cats do this all the time, don't they? Yeah? Do they just wake up in the morning and say, oh, I should do my stretches, spend five minutes stretching, and then now I'm good for the day? <laughs> no, they wake up and instinctive, exactly. It's instinctive for us, too. We just need someone to come along and say, it's, uh, it's OK, I give you permission to look like a fool or whatever you think might be happening. Because it, when they're in this position, have you seen them shake? Yes. When was the last time you shook during a stretch? No? Well, there's a whole world out there where we actually get in touch with this very natural sign. It's not, it's not animalistic. It's, it's just what it is to be a, cre a creature, a created being. We, all, we will. We'll shake. And people think, oh my goodness, what is happening to me? Am I, am I allowed to do this? It's like, does everyone else do this? <laughs> of, of course. You know, we, we've seen people, um, 15 anesthetics, just come out like that. Uh, nurses here, any nurses in here? Have you, have you seen people after recovering from Always anesthetic? Always after anesthetic. Yes, yeah. <coughs> Interesting, if you don't, and sometimes they strap you to the bed so you won't, if you don't, you carry that with you. And people think, well, well it's been three years since my operation, why am I still tight? Because Probably all those shakes are still in there. The cats get rid of them every time they wake up. We are proper and we're stiff upper lip and we carry things with us and we, you know, we keep our game face on and we don't let ourselves shake like we should. Anyway, I'm getting out of soapbox. Tell me to get off. Who would like to experience what it actually feels like? Because I've told you that it's gentle. It's also very safe. Because you're being so gentle, you're never going to hurt anybody. We say the, the worst thing that can happen is nothing, <laughs> actually. Because, there's, yes, there's no risk, there's no force, there's no, nothing that's uh, even the remotest chance. We, this, I th actually, this lady in the green here was the first. So does anyone have any questions while we're getting arranged up here? Yes? Constantly being made that we sort of saw earlier on. Yes. It's just the normal production yep. every day. Yep. 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 Here's another interesting fact fascia surrounds every cell. Okay, so the body's making thousands, millions of new cells every day. Every one of them is wrapped in fascia, every bundle of cells is wrapped in fascia. And this isn't unique to us. It, Anyone who does any form of body work would understand fascia and fascia release and those sorts of things. Where we differ is in the approach. We like to come in very gentle, subtle, just like a cat, you know, and ready to, ready to pounce. Other people, and probably other forms of myofascial release, they're like, man, this fascia is really tight. Let's, uh, you know, which it does work for some people, some elite athletes and, and whatever, but but particularly people already in, in chronic pain or other conditions like fibromyalgia. Yeah. Yes? Um, what about exercise and does, it, does that help release it if you can do cardio or something? Um, or some form of Sure. Only somewhat. So, some people will say that when they wake up in the morning, they feel absolutely terrible. But once you get up and walking around a little bit, you, you sort of Marginally better. Circulation, thank you. She said the nail on the head. Exercise gives you some element of circulation, but that's actually like trying to put that dead fish back in water. As in the... <laughs> it's colorful, colorful, I know. In the, when, the, when the, there's a... <laughs> I'll try and argue my way out of it now. Um, when the tissue dehydrates, 
because it's under so much pressure of all these years of pain and accumulation and stress and whatever. Um, we actually squeeze the fluid out of our cells. Does that make sense? So exercising or just regular walking around helps to force some of that fluid back in, but long term the tissue is still dry and dehydrated. You actually have to open that tissue up, five to seven minutes, gentle pressure, those sorts of things, in order for it to become rehydrated. And then you don't have to mechanically force the fluid through. It's just, it just goes back to the baby. And, yes. You're talking about <coughs> holding something for five minutes. Yep. <coughs> Sorry. Yep. For a lot of us with fibro. Yep. To actually like, pick up a bottle and hold it like that. Yep. One minute, not a problem. Yep. Two to three minutes. Yep. We can't do it as Sure. Very yeah. Heavy. Yeah. No, understood. So that's why all of the exercises, or well, the self treatment that we would recommend, is where your entire body must be entirely relaxed. Lying, laying down. Laying down. Stretching your leg and then whole um, Flat. Yeah. Flat. No, actually not, because your entire body must be relaxed. Otherwise, we get terribly confused. The body's, um, for example, if I'm trying to stretch my arm, if I want to uh, push it that way, then I'm trying to relax this, but using other muscles. So all of the self-treatment that we advise is where your entire body is entirely relaxed. So it's it's it's... That's why we shouldn't call it stretching because it's not an active stretch at all. For example, if you want to stretch your legs, um, it would be positioning yourself somehow on the couch where one foot could be on the arm of the couch or something as minor as that. So you could lie there. Some people actually fall asleep there. So, so does that answer your question? Um, or another alternative would be to lie on one of these. These are worth their weight in gold, yes, Roseanne's nodding. Um, so for example, if, if you have a pain in your back, you lie down on a bed, on a couch somewhere, put this in, that, in the spot where it hurts, and lie there. Sounds pretty easy, right? So there's no, there's no exertion. It's, it's gentle because the couch is absorbing some of the Force and you just, yeah. But there's always the focus element. You can't just lie there and read a book, as nice as that would be. You have to feel what's happening in the tissue and breathe with it and those sorts of things, which we'll teach you. Question, yeah? What if you can't relax? You know, mm. I've, I've, you know, I've always been told, yep. relax, relax, yep. relax. Yep. And that, but. My body just won't do that. Yep. You yep. Know, it doesn't matter how much I, you know, try meditation yes. or anything. Yes. It just will not. Yep. You know, good. Release. Yeah, good point. Can anyone else relate to that? Yeah, like we don't like to be more relaxed than we are. Yeah. Um, I'm getting another soapbox. Tell me to get off. We actually feel with our body. Psychologists have taught us that memory, emotion, all these things happen in the head. I beg to differ because if you go into a room and there's someone in there who's not safe, how long does it take you to figure it out? You know. And where do you feel it first? Stomach. Stomach. Gut. Yeah, a gut feel. Yeah. So and so is an absolute pain in the yeah. neck. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was thinking of that, but I said neck. Yeah. <laughs> Um, we, we feel with our body. So whenever, whenever we're feeling uptight, first of all, let me ask you this question. Everyone else has told you that you're uptight and you need to relax. What do you feel? Do, is that your sense or is that their sense? I always feel tense yep. and, you know, just tight everywhere. Yep. You know, I just feel that I can't. Yep. You know, okay, absolutely. So when we talk about the fascia being like these steel wires that are holding you tight, meditating is, pardon me, all your meditators, 
Meditating is like focusing on the color of those wires. Just get them out of there. They don't belong. The, re the, the steel wires are there for a reason, and that's because they're trying to protect you. They've got the brakes on. So there's some reason why your body is tight. It, uh, up here we might have forgotten, but it still remembers. And sometimes it's a bit like a stuck drawer. There's no drawers back there. You know, you pull the, it doesn't happen on these fancy rollers things we've got now. But remember those old wooden drawers? The big chests are the worst. You get them out and they sort of go, yeah, one side gets caught and gets stuck. Have you ever tried to pull that? Does it, no, absolutely. What do you have to do first? Push it back. Yeah, push it in. So before we are told to relax and just chill and whatever, some people actually feel like their tissue goes tighter initially for that five to seven minutes. Yeah, and through that tightness, it really it gets to the root cause of the reason why it's tight. And then, of course, we will relax. So I'm not answering your question very well. If you, treat the, if you try and solve the problem on the level of the problem, you're just trying to, your body's tr you're making you tight, and you're just trying to push back and make it relax. You just get into the struggle with yourself. It's, it's better to feel that tightness and lean into it momentarily, five, seven minutes. You might feel stirred up for a day, but then you're, you're good. Get on with your life. It's like the symptom and treating the cause. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Question, yeah. Um, how often does this really, or how long does this release last? Is it something you have to do regularly, this sort of treatment? Theoretically, once you've released the muscle memory, that layer of tissue, it never comes back. So the question then becomes, how many layers are there? Well, how old are you? How long has it been a problem? How stubborn are you? Dare I say that? <laughs> this, to, this work is, only works for people who are A, open to another approach, and B, they're, they're going to focus in there. It focus on their tissue. And there's only so much that a therapist can do. Yeah? So our medical training has pretty much told the practitioner that you have to be the expert. You have to know what's wrong, how to fix it, and get in there and do it. Well, again, this is where you're teaching us a great lesson. Because it doesn't work like that. Everyone's different. Everyone's, it's a journey. Yeah? I'm not going to stand up here and say, yes, it's a cure for fibromyalgia. Yeah. It's the destination. What about, what about the journey between here and there? There's, there's some amazing tools, and it's, not, it's nothing that John Barnes discovered. It's nothing, that, nothing new I'm telling you. You saw it in the cats, yeah? It's like, well, that looks nice. <laughs> Our bodies know how to do that, and it's just a matter of being reminded, as opposed to being some fancy technique that, yeah, I know where I've got to push, and if I push there, you're fixed. <laughs> Doesn't, it doesn't work like that. Because you know where you're tight. Start there, release that, and then go on to the next layer, and the next layer. And it might be 20 layers. It might. So, so theoretically, they're permanent, permanent results. Actually, we've still got that, the stressor. We're still living with that SOB. We're still whatever. We, you know what I mean? We, we have an accidental fall in the shower, and things get tight again. So there's that, there's that life element. Also, we treat for an hour, usually. And you can't do everything in an hour. So sometimes things will pull back into other areas. Yeah. So how, how can you learn to stretch gently? Um, after this, we'll, we'll show you some things. Once you get the feel of it, yeah. you can, hey, you got one of these? You can go hog wild. And, Experiment on all kinds of places because your body is unlike any other body. Yeah? Yeah? Okay. Um, are you able to explain what they're doing? Sure. <laughs> um, let me just. Yeah. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> 
I should just give her the mic. What, what are you feeling, Rosemary? Pain. Pain. Is it uh, a good kind of pain, or is it a or like a injurious? This is hurting me. Stop it straight away. No, no. I mean, it's, it's pain. It's bearable. Yeah. Uh, familiar pain to you? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Familiar pain. Yeah. Um, and there's no good pain, sorry. Absolutely, good, good point, yeah. The, the two words are mutually exclusive. Yes, yes. So Rosemary just, Rosemary just made a really good point. There's no such thing as good pain. Um, a lot of... Yeah. It's working pain, isn't it? Yeah. Sometimes bring up toxins. It is, yeah. So, yes. And I always say pain is there for a reason. Mm -hmm. There's a reason it's, it's hurting. So the idea of masking it or blocking it out or um, actually what most drugs are doing, here's an, here's an interesting one. Imagine there's a bridge between me and the table, between the table and I. That's better grammar, isn't it? There's a bridge between there and that's full of water. The only way you can get something through there is to send it through the water, yes? I'm talking about the synapse. You heard, that, heard of that thing in your brain? Yep. So most drugs either stop the pain message getting through by A, drying up all the water, so there's nothing in there, you don't feel anything, or B, filling that gap with glue so that if, if the signal gets in there, it can't get to the other side, but it also can't get back. Yeah. So on a anatomical level, that's, that's the only way that, that drugs are, are effective. And some of them are. We need drugs. If, if you've got a presentation, if you've got to go to work, thank you, um, then you need to go through. And we need surgery too, often, sometimes. One more. I've done a fair bit of study into our fascia release. Yep. And most people, it's hold for a few seconds, release, yep. do that repeatedly. Yes. You're offering something totally different where it's holding for five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. I've just been told we've got two minutes left. I'll try, I'll, if I get time, um, what, what Joni is doing here, you might have seen that arm move before. I just want to quickly speak to that. That's effectively the same as the cat doing that cat stretch, yeah? So the tissue in her arm naturally took her there and naturally brought her back. Joni was just following and allow, just taking gravity out of the system, basically, just holding the weight of it. Okay, 30 seconds, go. Um, I have been treated by Joni and Sheldon, and I'm interested to know that Rosemary said she doesn't feel anything, but I felt, and always do when I'm treated by this, that I know it's working with my breathing. That when I'm just, there's a, there's a time of breath you take with this treatment where you can actually feel the release. It's this deep body breath, and you can actually know that something is releasing with that. So I never judge by the pain or anything like that that I'm going through with the treatment. I judge by the actual, my own breathing and the relief I get from just that relaxing breath, knowing that everything is beginning to release. Well said. Brilliant. Thank you. And just back to your question too, sorry, I don't know what you of getting into the tissue and getting back out, in and out. That would be like lighting the candle, blowing it out. Lighting the candle, blowing it out. Lighting the candle, blowing it out. We want to light the candle and let it burn so it has time to melt and change. Does that make sense? Good. Time's up. We're going to, yes. Yeah. Um, you know when you say about the, like, the steel, etc. Yeah. And that, um, I get a very severe like cramp here yep. in only in this arm. Yep. And that it just comes out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. I can just be doing nothing and it will cat happen. Yep. And then my hand will go like an absolute claw. Mm. And that and not be able to move that hand. Yep. And that so is that just tightening of that that, you know? It is. It's tiny of those steel wires. Yeah, the fascia is, for whatever reason, um, tightening to protect, and when it does tighten, it triggers that spasm, the nerves, those those sorts of things. 
Yeah. Again, same principles. Gentle, sustained pressure. Wait for all that tissue to let go. Breathe into it, like Rosemary said. And yeah. I just get annoyed when you go to the doctors and they just said, oh, that's another fibromyalgia symptom. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's always Coming from the other side and of things, have, have they checked your electrolytes, especially your calcium level? Or magnesium? No. Mm. Yeah, your electrolytes, magnesium and calcium, um, because it, it could be symptoms of something else. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, it shouldn't be dismissed. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Thank you very much for having us. I hope it's been informative.